this show of Dentist TV is brought to you by Apex Ezines, Dentistry's paperless magazine, which you can read more about on apexezines.com. Coming up in today's show, we have an interview with Dr. Tony Kilcoin about an update on HTML 105. We have 60 seconds of social media and we review the wand. Hi, I'm Marisa Kretzinger and this is a dental TV show that helps dental professionals like you to go from ordinary to extraordinary. Welcome to our first ever episode of Dentist TV. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what you can expect to see in these shows going forward. In a nutshell, Dentist TV is a web-based, brief, online format in which you can watch video content that will give you ideas to implement forward-thinking strategies for any dental professional to help your practice go from ordinary to extraordinary. As all dental professionals in the UK will know, the HTM0105 guidelines have been quite controversial since they've been launched. We caught up with Dr. Tony Kilcoin, who has been a renowned campaigner for having these guidelines reviewed, and asked him about where we are at the moment in terms of after the elections, where the new government is going to take these guidelines, and what every dental professional needs to bear in mind at this stage. Hi, I'm Marita Kretzinger, and today I'm speaking with Dr. Tony Kilcoin. And Tony, we've spoken a lot about HTML 105, one of your favorite topics. Um, can you give us an update on what the latest is currently or from what you've heard? Yes. Well, of course, HTML 105, it's really quite a, a dynamic subject. There's a lot of uncertainty still out there, which still worries people when the amount of investment and disruption to the practice is really an onerous task for most practice owners. Uh, what's really interesting is I have done a number of freedom of information requests to the Department of Health asking for their exact figures on any cost benefit analysis or impact analysis that they've done that HTML 105 would have on practices and patient care. Today, I've had a number of answers that have really fudged things, but yesterday I got a final request for my exact figures answered, saying there aren't any exact figures. It's difficult to give exact figures. However, they are now backtracking and looking at ways of assessing the cost and the impact upon the system, practices and patients. So I'm afraid the concerns we raised earlier on of what would be the cost benefit analysis, has anyone done this, appears to be that they haven't done it before releasing the guidelines uh, as fully as they should have done. So I'm afraid, if anything, that just adds to the uncertainty. And today I've been speaking to colleagues where in Northern Ireland now, it's also just been announced that they have to go straight to best practice requirements. No essential requirements first and then move on to best practice at some time in the future. They have to implement the whole thing now. And the feedback I'm getting is that's extremely disruptive, costly and a great worry and burden upon all the practitioners in Northern Ireland. And we know the other four UK countries, it's only a matter of time before that's imposed upon us. We have a new government, new coalition, new, I think it's Earl Howe is now the minister with responsible for dentistry, it was announced this week. Hopefully, if you've got any concerns as well, or you would like them to maybe refer it to NICE to be properly reviewed, not only on a cost-benefit analysis, but on a scientific evidence base. So any changes we are making have not only a, a good long-term future without many changes, but a good scientific basis that protect and help our patients. We all want better cross-infection control. We don't want to waste money and time on some experiment that may not be valid. Thank you, Tony. And we're, we're currently at the British Dental Association's annual conference. And what are you finding um, how, how this trend and how this sort of gu these guidelines are um, dominating the, the subject matter of some of these manufacturers? Well, you can't help but notice, you know, the number of trade stands and companies that are uh, trying to help the profession and provide uh, materials, planning, uh, even sort of reorganizing uh, local decontamination units providing cabinetry and all sorts of services that uh, dentists and their dental teams are going to need. So they are responding to that need. But yes, it's interesting when you look around the whole show, just how many uh, stands there are dedicated to this subject. 
in some ways I feel sorry for them because when I speak to a number of different people they too sometimes get different advice from different PCTs when they're making plans for different practices about what's acceptable and what isn't. So whilst we have the guidance, it has changed three or four times already in the last six months, it is likely there will be some further changes. So again, even for the, the manufacturers, for the dentists, their teams, interpreting the guidelines and planning to try and accommodate what might be future changes too is a, a great concern for everybody. And the sooner this is cleared up, the sooner we actually have a good evidence base that is um, cost effective, that is proportionate to the risk, that we can all agree on is a good thing, uh, the better for everybody. Do you agree with Tony Kilcoyne's stance on this? What would you like the new government to, to do with ATM 0105? We'd love to hear from you, so please share your comments below. <laughs>
or provide a list of current local attractions. All you have to do is ask. Isn't that so innovative for a dental practice? What have you done in your practice that's equally as innovative? Tell us about it in the link below. The Dental Trauma Guide is brought to us by Copenhagen University Hospital. It's a great resource for learning how to treat dental trauma. So you go to the patient and examination spot, and here it will walk you through what you need to do, what you need to discuss with the patient in assessing the trauma. Everywhere from talking about the injury to the radiographic and clinical examinations, along with photographing the injuries. And from there, you can then go back up into any one of the various types of injuries that you might have diagnosed. So in this case, let's just go to a subluxation injury. Here, you can then get the description of the injury, what a subluxation is. You click on the etiology and they have these great videos to actually demonstrate what happens in that type of injury. So here you see the tooth was struck, what the consequences of having the tooth injured are, and it walks you through this whole process. So we go to the diagnosis phase and again we're seeing what, what's happening, how to properly diagnose this type of injury, seeing what's going on. Um, that's the whole thing that it will just walk you through every single step of the way so that you make the appropriate diagnosis. Great videos to help you through it. Now you go to the treatment and we get the same type of video help. What to do step by step in the treatment of this type of injury. Wonderful, wonderful resource and it walks you right through the process so you don't have to think about it. You identify it, diagnose it, and what to do and how to treat it. Our product review for this show has been done by Dr. Andrew Lake from Manchester and he has reviewed a product called The Wand which is a single tooth anesthetic delivery method. Now he says about using the product that there was a definite learning curve for him when he first started using it but the company that supplies it in the UK, Dental Practice Systems, were really good and provided quite a lot of support to him in those initial stages. And he says that once you have the grasp of the techniques and you factor in that it takes a little bit longer than a traditional injection, you're plain sailing and it's great for children and very anxious patients. Um, and Andy says very interestingly, I, like many other dentists, was convinced that I was proficient as the traditional methods of local anesthesia and with use of topical could deliver pain-free injections. But once you've had 20 feedback forms from patients of, after using the wand, you realize you weren't that good after all. So for that reason, Andy gives the wand four out of five molars. He says it doesn't get five out of five because it's quite expensive, so there are initially some setup costs involved, but for the rest, it's a great tool to have in your practice. If you want a full review, to read the full review that Andy has written, you can just click on the link below this video. And that brings us to the end of our first show. We hope you enjoyed watching it, and we'd like to thank all our contributors who made this show possible today. Now remember to please share your comments and ask questions in the area below. And also we've provided links to all the segments for further reading in the area below, so go ahead and read up on those. We at Dentist TV look forward to bringing you many, many more shows to come. Coming up in our next show, we have an interview with Marjolaine Hovier, who is the president of the International Federation of Dental Hygiene. We then look at a dental practice that is using the iPad in a very unique way in its patient communication and marketing strategies. Be sure to join us then. I'm Marisa Kutzinger, and it's been a pleasure sharing with you how you can take your practice from the ordinary to the extraordinary.